Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. Great article for you guys here from, from Mike over at Light Reading. I'll leave a link to it in the description so you guys can check it out. So we got we got analysts putting out their, their estimates and predictions for Q4 earnings. And we got TD Cohen giving their predictions on T-Mobile. Um, AT&T, I'm not really going to take that as a prediction because AT&T pretty much gave us preliminary numbers. They told us 500,000 ads for postpay, 250,000 fiber. They gave us those numbers. Uh, Pascal gave that away at a conference early in December. So I don't see them being any different versus what they gave us at that conference. So here's what they believe T-Mobile will gain in Q4. TD Cowan analyst believes T-Mobile led, led the U.S. market with a gain of 860,000 postpaid uh, phone cu customers in Q4. That's a, that's a pretty big number. And Morgan Stanley analysts believe T-Mobile gained 500,000 such customers for fixed wireless access. So big numbers, right? Is it down year over year? Yes. That's what I anticipated. The market is more competitive than Q4 of last year. If I remember correctly, don't quote me on this, but Q4 of last year, T-Mobile added 920,000 postpaid ads. So they would be down year over year. If they come in at the 860,000, T-Mobile would be down year over year. And if I'm correct, they were also higher than 500,000 on fixed wireless access ads Q4 of last year. So they would be considered down year over year. I don't know how that affects their stock. We'll see when they officially report. But that's something that people are going to look at, right? Why is T-Mobile down on numbers year over year? And I do anticipate churn to be up a little versus Q4 last year. Because this, this fourth quarter, this holiday season, the competition was, was much stiffer versus last year. It was way more aggressive. Verizon brought heavy intensity. You guys saw that they gave away free Xboxes. If you joined home internet, they did the, uh, they ended up doing, I think it was like four iPhone 14s for free. I mean, they, they were, they were pushing their plans and then they were doing the any iPhone, any condition. That was another big one that Verizon was offering. AT&T remained aggressive with their new and existing customer promos. We had Dish with Boost Infinite. They gave, you know, they pushed their their uh, iPhone, get a free iPhone 15, no trade-in required. All the MVNOs were pushing heavily. Cable was competing now with, with phone subsidies as well. So we didn't have any of that in Q4 of last year. We didn't have... We didn't have Boost Infinite pushing free iPhones. We didn't have phone subsidies on cable. We didn't have the MVNOs going as aggressive as they did. We didn't have Verizon pushing out Xbox Series S and Xs for free and all that. We didn't have any of that last year. But this year we did. And it probably will show a bit in T-Mobile's numbers. They will be down. And, I, and I, I'm confident in that. They will be down on the numbers versus Q4 of last year. And as crazy as this sounds, that's a good thing because that keeps T-Mobile on their toes and it keeps them from making moves like force migrating customers onto new plans. It keeps them from, hey, maybe we shouldn't raise pricing. Maybe we shouldn't do this because competition is, is, is tougher than ever. If they don't see any pushback on their moves, if they continue growing and and having blowout quarters and, and, and they continue increasing year over year, they're not going to make any changes. They're going to stay put. So in order for them to maybe bring the Uncarrier culture back and remain competitive and be the company that got them where they are today, the competition has to step up. And I feel the competition is slowly but surely increasing from all angles. From the MNO side, the MVNO side, from cable, everybody wants a piece of the pie. And that's why I truly believe T Mobile's numbers are going to be down just a bit versus Q4 of 2022. Now, what does that mean for Q4 2024? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. 
Maybe T-Mobile changes. Maybe they do become much more aggressive versus what they have been. It, it you know, they they did go into this holiday season, this uh, last holiday season, twenty twenty three, with plans that are more expensive. We have to take that into consideration. The Go five G Plus, the Go five G Next, those plans are more expensive than what they what they had in the market a year prior. A year prior, they still had the Magenta plans. They still had Magenta Max. So we have to. everything has to be taken into consideration. We have to look at it objectively. We can't just say, okay, the, the, the reason that this happened is just because of this. No, it's, it's everything. It's everything. It's more competition. It's T-Mobile had cheaper price points a year ago. Everything. Everything has to be taken into consideration when reviewing and analyzing the information. But we got estimates from TD Cohen. We got some from Morgan Stanley. 860,000 postpaid ads, respectively, and 500,000 FWA ads. That's right around where T-Mobile should feel comfortable, especially with competition at, 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 as stiff as it's been. T-Mobile should be pleased. Now, investors, analysts, how they view that when, when it's officially reported remains to be seen. Maybe stocks down because of it. Maybe there's some negative negative commentary coming out. We'll review that on the 25th of January when T-Mobile reports. But for now, these are the estimates. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Follow my social media outlets for more updates and interactions. This is Tyrone with Tech Life, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.